Hello and welcome back to Grafter Branch Ministry. As always, I'm Scotty Erb. Today's message, we're talking about the Word of God and how the Word of God is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Okay, let's go ahead and open up our King James Bible and read it. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Ephesians chapter 6, I can't remember exactly which verse, let's go ahead and turn there. Ephesians chapter 6, speaking on the armor of God, talks about the sword of the Spirit, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Do you know your weapon? Do you trust it? Do you have patience with it? To continue with it throughout the longevity of a fight? Or do you know how to use it precisely enough that in the right moment you can strike and end the conflict in someone else's soul? The battle that's going on spiritually for someone else's soul quite a thought you step up to somebody and you start asking them if they know Jesus Christ if they've ever heard the blessed word and maybe they're a Mormon or a Catholic they have their religion and they start debating with you. Do you start going toe to toe with them on the Word of God? Or do you let them, being heretics, speak until you see their weakness? Being patient. For the Word of God is quick and sharper than any two edged sword. You know, most sword fights throughout history, like a, a civilian sword fight without any armor, just clothes would end in five to eight seconds. The numbers aren't that far off for a modern day shootout. A civilian shooting happens pretty quick. I think it's three to five seconds for shooting. As soon as someone decides that they're going to attack, they're going to do something. It happens really fast. And we're told that the Word of God is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. So, the Word of God strikes from your mouth, from your hand. Do you know how to wield it? Having patience and continuance in well-doing. Romans chapter 2. Go ahead and go there with me. Romans chapter 2, verse 7. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing I was, I was talking to my wife this morning. And asked, what do you suppose that means? Well, it means what it says. Sure enough. Patient continuance in well-doing, it's not talking about necessarily persevering in doing God's work. But patience and continuance in well-doing. Having yourself prepared for the things... Seeking for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Laying up treasures in heaven rather than trying to seek out earthly treasures here. Being entangled with the ways of the world here. Verse 8. 
But unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Again, bring you back to the analogy when you start witnessing to somebody. Start talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you get contentious with them? Will you have patience and hear them out? Understand where they are so that way you can strike. Strike properly. Put in an end to the conflict. Don't take long. Any conflict, I mean, go ahead and do your research, okay? And the Word of God often represents and talks about battles and conflict. Of course, there is the spiritual battles and conflict, mostly at hand. But it compares those spiritual conflicts to physical. And the Word of God is quick, sharper than any two-edged sword. Do you trust your weapon? Do you have patience and continuance in well-doing, basically standing there, ready to fight with the proper stance and continuance in that? Not giving up ground, not, not ceding anything. But when somebody becomes contentious and they overreach and they stretch out and they attack, they give themselves into a vulnerable position. The Word of God is quick. And as soon as somebody that you're witnessing to, say it's a Mormon, they let known that they don't believe that Jesus is God. Well, then you, in your head, think, hey, John, what time is it? It's 10.30. John 10.30. I and the Father are one. And Jesus is talking about salvation there. Let's go ahead and go there. John chapter 30, or John chapter 10. Forgive me for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Lord God, I do pray for authority. All that be in authority, from the highest position down to those police officers and the medics. I pray for them that we might lead quiet and peaceful lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, <laughs> we'll come back to 1030, but another teaching lesson right there. Patience, continuance, and well-doing. And something... Something that you should be doing all the time. For yourself, for the other brethren. And it's in well-doing. It's not necessarily in good works. But patience, continuance in well-doing. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And so there's that patience continuance. Prime example, I didn't even plan that, but in the middle of a sermon, stopping and praying for authority as you're instructed by the Word of God. Pay continuance back to our analogy of witnessing to a Mormon and then they say that they don't believe that Jesus Christ is God the Father. Same with a Jehovah's Witness or a Catholic. They'll say, no, Jesus is just the Son of God. So, again, hey John, what time is it? It's 10.30. Go to John 10.30. It says, I and my Father are one. In context, backing up to verse 25, right, let's go to verse 22. Jesus is talking about salvation here. And it was at Jerusalem 
the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt if thou be the Christ? Then tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, bear they witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Do you trust the Word of God? You're not able to be plucked out. You can have that patience and continuance in well-doing and hear somebody out to know where they are. Just as Paul, multiple different instances, would suffer beatings, suffer reproach, being bound in chains. Patience and continuance in well-doing, just wanting to preach the Word of God. And as we started, the Word of God is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4, 11, or 4, 12, excuse me. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You don't need to say much. You don't need to win the argument, even. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. You have that patience, continuance, and well-doing as we read in Romans chapter 2, verse 7. Seeking after eternal life, caring more about the things that pertain to eternal life. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech, or with wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Do you think it's any different for us today? Us that are saved, that believe in the Word of God, that are given the ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 and are committed with the word of reconciliation, verse 19. Much more than, verse 20, we are ambassadors for Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, tells us to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. Do you have patience and continuance in well-doing, or are you contentious? when witnessing to others. Kind of preaching to myself because I often become short-tempered and walk off. I keep in my mind, well, okay, someone else is ready to hear the Word of God. What if that person that's talking with me, even though that they're talking about their other religion, all I have to do is say something about Jesus Christ, point them to John 10.30, and now the Word of God stabbed in. Dividing to the joints of morals, the soul and spirit, a discerner of the thoughts. Kind of an interesting little thing. Go back to Genesis real quick. You want to see something? Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. God saw the thoughts and imaginations of man, and that's what made him want to 
caused the flood. Here you have in John chapter er, Genesis chapter six, verse fourteen, he tells Noah, "Make thee an ark of gopher wood." He tells him just before in verse thirteen. Excuse me, I should have read this one. And God said to Noah, "The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth." It's all because of the thoughts and the imaginations. But many people don't mind that. They're more concerned about what they do or don't do. They're more concerned about the carnal ordinances, how it is that they're portrayed, how it is that they're seen. Are they, are they a cool guy? <laughs> Such a weird saying. If you're cool in this world, well, you're going to be burning in hell. <laughs> Who's really cool? The ones that, you know, have eternal life? Patience, continuance, and well-doing. Have a cool head about you. It's kind of why I'm a little mellow in this study. It was enlightening to me. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, received and wherein ye stand do you stand or are you easily moved by it by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain did ye believe in vain or do you realize that that person that you're witnessing to or talking to maybe a family member that you're getting upset with are you worried that they're going to dissuade you? Are you standing there? Are you believing in vain and you're worried that, oh, you need to just argue and, and get it out and be contentious and argue your point? Or by having patience and continuance and well-doing, seeking after the things of the Lord and doing as you're guided to, waiting upon the Lord to move, Are you standing? Are you stable? Verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Okay, if you're believing in your heart, have you called out to God? God is the one that does the saving. Maybe you're still worried because it's all a head knowledge. And so you need to be contentious and argue with other people on these different things. And start just being contentious and saying, no, you're giving over to a reprobate mind and walk off. March away from them. Not giving them the chance. You know, most of the people that are living in such wickedness and sin, sodomites, tattooed, filthy, druggies, whatever, they're the ones that are more ready to receive the Word of God than somebody that's dressed like me. The majority of the time. Because you have somebody that's well-dressed, they usually already have the religion. I trust that you know that I am trying to stick to the Word of God and trying to instruct you into righteousness. Romans chapter 10 Okay. Verse 4, 10, 4. You hear me? For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. You only need to come to Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You only need to point someone to Jesus Christ and Him crucified. They don't need to go and follow any special ordinances. Once you believe that Jesus Christ was how He died, was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, then you just got to confess to God what you believe in your heart. Verse 9, Romans 10, 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Go back to Romans chapter 2, verse 7. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory 
and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Gentile is basically a fancy way to say any non-Jew. If you were not aware. But... I'm trying to pull back to some of the simple basics within the Word of God. And touch upon them once again. So in these coming weeks, and with this message, if these are things that you say that you already know, then put them into effort. Put them into effect. Have that patience, continuance, in well-doing. Not being contentious, not striving. Knowing and trusting your weapon, for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Trusting your weapon, trusting your armament, refining yourself upon it, knowing it. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and that way you can instruct others also. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. That's why I'm here. And so don't be afraid to take what I've taught, or what any other man has taught you, instructed you in, coming from the Word of God. Use it. Teach upon it. Instruct others also. For there's only one doctrine, brethren. Verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure the hardness. Endure those ridiculing, masquerading, murmuring. Let no man despise thee. Time, uh, Titus chapter 2 says... Of course they're going to not like you when you bring up the Word of God. You're stabbing into them. But patience, continuance, and well-doing. Endure hardness as a good soldier for Jesus Christ. Verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Are you going to do so with patience and continuance in well-doing? Or are you going to be con contentious? Are you going to strive unlawfully, unrighteously, or being argumentative, debating? Being determined to only know one thing, Lord. And that one thing, being the Lord Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Nothing else matters. Nothing else truly matters. And along with the patience, continuance, and well-doing, if you don't have these circumstances that I've described, and you're wondering if you should even try to witness to your family members, have patience and continuance and well-doing, studying up on the Word of God. Hearing Men, preach it. Taking it. Adhering to it. Studying it out yourself. Checking to see if things are so. Training yourself up with your weapon. The sword of the Spirit. The Word of God. And allow God to work in you. For if you are born again, okay, we have a fellowship together in the Gospel. Go with me to Philippians. We'll close here. Philippians chapter 1. Verse 5, For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He which has begun a good work in you. Okay. 
It's the Lord Jesus Christ sealed within you. And He's going to lead you unto all truth. He's going to have you see the things in the Word of God that He needs you to see. He's going to have you hear a message like this and kind of, okay, yeah, we need to pull back and be more patient and continuance in well-doing. Have that loving care, that meekness, gentleness. John chapter 16, John chapter 16, verse 13. Howbeit, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And we know that it's one spirit. Going back to Ephesians, I know I said I was going to close a second ago, forgive me. These scriptures just keep on coming to me. And I need to make sure that you understand what it is that we're talking about. Having that patience and continuance in well-doing, trusting the Word, having confidence in your weapon, standing on the salvation wherewith you are called, not being moved about with every wind of doctrine, Ephesians 4 verse 14, that we henceforth no more children be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Growing up in him. I referenced this earlier, Ephesians 4 verse 1. Therefore I... Or I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Therefore, er, there is one body, and there is one body, one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. It's only one salvation, brethren. There's a straight and narrow path. Or there's the wide, we- the wide path that leads unto death and destruction, and many there be that go in there at. But there's one faith, or one Lord, one faith, one baptism, the spiritual baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. That Spirit, Jesus Christ, who is the Father, John 10, 30, is in you. And He's guiding you into all truth. Have patience and continuance in well-doing. Preparing yourself for that moment, that conflict, when battle is going to be upon you. Because when that conflict does come, it's over that quick it's it's done there's nothing that you can do to to walk it back if you speak falsely concerning the word of god but it's also over as quick if you strike properly oftentimes leading them laying down not knowing what to do not knowing how to respond and maybe they're going to get contentious and then you know where their heart truly lies I hope this message was a blessing, brethren. Stay strong. Stay true. And if I don't see you again before at the feet of Jesus, keep praying. Keep preaching. Because there's yet another soul that might be saved. Bye now.